name is Sean Burns and I'm going to give you an introduction to Autodesk's 3ds Max 2015. This is a fantastic bit of software. It's typically used for creating animations and video games as well as CGI and special effects for movies. But with that it's a great design tool. It's a very advanced bit of software and especially for creating the likes of complex forms and shapes with, uh, with some elaborate curves and so on but it's uh, it's also very compatible uh, across the range of software packages so you can um, if you're more comfortable using other other packages such as Autodesk Inventor or SketchUp or a number of packages you can actually import those packages into this into the 3ds Max and modify them manipulate them and, but what we will do is we will cover that a little bit later on and for this tutorial I want to try and keep it to within around the 10 minutes or so. So what we'll do is we'll try and help you get familiar with the interface and what we have on the screen here and some of the more commonly used tools and commands that will uh, that will help you help you along the way. So to start off, let's go up here to the very top left and you can see that the file button has been replaced by the 3ds Max application button. But here we can open, save, import and export our files. So we can manage the files in the same manner as the, as the file button. So we, we run with that. And just below that you can see we have the, the menu bar. And when we click any of the options uh, it gives us our drop down menu which we can select uh, a, number of, a number of commands. Okay. Just below that this area here is known as the toolbar. So we can undo, redo, as well as uh, select objects, move them, uh, rotate them, select them, and so on, um, scale them. Um, but we, we'll go through that. We'll go through that in a few minutes, and we will um, also go through some of the hotkeys that I would recommend uh, becoming familiar with to help your uh, design process run a little bit more efficiently. Just below the toolbar, then we have uh, we have the, the ribbon which gives us a drop down and this gives us some more advanced options once we have some objects uh, on our screen and we will deal with that later on in maybe a, a, another tutorial uh, on the right hand side over here we have our, um, our command panel and this is split up into six tabs and so if I'm on a particular tab and yours looks a little bit different don't worry it's probably just a case of selecting the correct tab um, from, from the options given. So um, we will cover that again. Uh, we will be using this uh, a lot throughout, so we will, you, you will uh, become more comfortable with this as we, as we move through our tutorials. Below our main area here, we have the lower interface, which is pretty much used for animations and simulations. Um, over here in the bottom right hand corner we can uh, we can manipulate our viewports we can zoom we can rotate and so on and we can also uh, we have our our play and uh, frame frame selections uh, to deal with this lower interface over here so this main screen area as you can see it's split up into four sections which are known as viewports and this is your, your top, front, left, and your perspective view. Now, although we're not going to um, we're not going to cover too much on creating objects, I'm just going to drop in an object or two here just to show how each viewport displays the same object just from a different orientation. So I'll just draw a quick box and a quick sphere, just for now. Okay. So as I said earlier on, we're going to go through some of the tools and some of the hotkeys so by default when you open up uh, 3ds max your toolbar is set to select an object so you can pick whichever object you want to work with okay and um, if you want to work with both objects you can hold control and you can select both objects like so so i'll hold control and select the sphere then the box now both of these are, are selected and if i wanted to move these tools uh, around I can go up here to the toolbar and I can select and move okay but as I said it'd be better to get familiar with the with the commands with the shortcuts and so 
uh, if we want to move an object, or in this case we're going to move both objects, rather than going to the toolbar we will select W and you can see here it gives us three axes, your, your X, your Y and your Z. So once, once that axis is highlighted, you can click on that, that uh, axis and then it's going to move in that direction. So that was the X, then we have the, the Z and the Y. And if you notice in each of the viewports, the object is being, uh, is being manipulated. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the move tool. If you want to rotate, you press E, select your object and you can rotate that object again by selecting a particular axis and rotate it to your desire. And if you want to undo, just simply hold Control and Z until you go back to where you until you go back to where you're happy with. Okay, so while we're on the rotate, um, the rotate tool, we'll actually just if you noticed while I was while I was rotating, it's going in very slight increments. It's hard, very hard for me if I wanted to rotate that down to ninety degrees. It's very hard for me to get it bang on ninety degrees. So I'm going to leave it there undo if we go up here to our angle snap toggle highlight that guy go back down to your rotator and now you can see it moves in five degree increments so i can land on the 90 degrees much easier like so okay now if we wanted to um to scale an object we can press or highlight the object and then you can scale it by selecting the center of the axis and that will scale the object uniformly okay alternatively you can highlight another axis again we have your Z your X and your Y so we can select an axis and we can scale it only along that object so you can see in the case of this sphere it's actually stretching see it's actually stretching the sphere into a, an oval an oval shape Okay, just one thing I, I actually uh, failed to mention there when we were talking about uh, moving and and, um, and and so on. We can move, press W again. So as I said, we can use the axis or you can check this little guy uh, between this little yellow box that lies between each axis and you can move him in any direction that you wish. Okay, so let's undo this and bring it back to normal and um, just before we finish up uh, we will just go through some of the some of the, the mouse buttons so for me to rotate this guy around I'm simply holding alt and the middle wheel down so I can rotate the, the viewport around you can see this view cube is moving to do the same action I can simply click on the view cube and I can move it around clicking and dragging in, in each direction we can roll the scroll wheel forward and back and that will zoom towards our cursor okay and we can pan simply by holding down the middle uh, scroll wheel and dragging in our direction that we would like to pan to and then you can simply check the little home button uh, above the, the view cube click that guy and it's going to bring you to your default default view Okay, so I think that's enough for this tutorial. As I said, I want to keep it uh, below the below the ten minutes. I might just show you one quick one quick little uh, handy little tool as well, just before we move on. If you somehow manage to lose your view, lose your object within your view, if you press Z, that will bring that back. Okay, so we'll take everything out of the way here, like so. We're after losing all of our objects, so we can hover above each of each view and and click Z. Or we can press Control, Shift, and Z, and that will bring each viewport back to its original state. It'll zoom, extend onto the object. Okay, well, I hope that was of some use to you. I recommend you play around and get familiar with your shortcuts and the screen and some of the commands, and I will see you in the next tutorial.